Welcome to the wide world of color correction. I know it can seem daunting at first. What the heck are all these rainbow circles? What is a LUT? And what is this radar looking thing? Take a deep breath and relax. <laughs> I'm here to demystify things a little and share my approach for basic color correction. Join me, won't you? Okay, so let's get started color correcting. I personally like to start with exposure, and in order to best color correct our footage, we're not just going to rely on our eyeballs and our monitors, because that's pretty subjective. Instead, we're going to use something called the waveform. Wait, come back! I know that it seems scary, but trust me, it's really not. Basically, the waveform just shows you the brightness levels of your image. So, up here you have your highlights, here is your midtones, and these are your shadows. So a super bright image will have the waveform way up at the top, and as you can see, this image is really bright. And then a super dark image, all the information will be at the bottom of the waveform. And you can see in here that this is a very dark image. This line at the very top represents where your image is super overexposed and it's clipping, which means that there's no more information there and you won't be able to recover that and it'll just be pure white. And you know, as you can see, there are parts of it right here that are going over and you know, it represents certain parts of her face or the wall, and that's bad. It looks bad and you don't wanna do that. Similar at the bottom, the very bottom line means that you have clipped the blacks and that means it's pure black. So these parts of the image are all clipped and there's no information there, it's just pure black. There are a ton of different ways you can adjust the exposure and resolve, but for me, I'm going to stick with the wheels, which are these things right here. You've got your lift, your gamma, and your gain. And you can basically think of these as your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So to adjust them, you use these little wheel bars down here. You know, if you pull it to the left, that brings it down. If you pull it to the right, it brings it up. Similarly on all of the other different ones. And if you wanna reset your image, you just go to this little reset all button. So for me personally, I'm gonna take the gain, which is the highlights, and I usually like it to live somewhere around 896. So I'm gonna just kind of pull it up there, just pull it up a little bit. And for the shadows, you basically want it to be hovering just above the zero so that none of them are crushed and you still have a little bit of information there. When you tweak one of the values, it affects all of them. So you might have to do a little bit of back and forth until you get the exposure and the contrast that you want. When you're working with the highlights in the game, there might be certain parts of your image that blow out a little bit, such as windows or bright lights or something like that, and that's totally fine. You wanna just use common sense and focus on the areas that are most important for your image. You can also just adjust the midtones as you see fit, you know, just kind of see what works best for you. I'm gonna put mine somewhere right there. Okay, so now we have a generally well-exposed image. You can click the bypass color button to disable the grade and you can bask in the glory of all of your work. So basically to summarize for exposure, you wanna use your waveform to make sure that your highlights are just around 896, um, but not going above the clipped line at the top and your shadows you wanna live somewhere just above zero with the midtones being somewhere in between whatever you think looks best. So now let's move on to white balance. The tool that I like to use to monitor white balance in post is called the vector scope. And to access it, you just go down here, select vector scope, and if you want to see it bigger, you can just click this expand button. And basically, this is the color value of your image. It shows you the different colors of light and how much they're represented in your image. For instance, you have yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, and green. This is the color value of your image, and you basically want it to be as centered as possible. See, if I make it more green, the value goes over to green, and if I make it more red, for instance, you can see that the white moves up to the red part of the vector scope. So let's try to balance this image. There's a tool called the eyedropper, which you can select and try to choose something that's white and click it, and sometimes it works. Maybe it'll give you a nice little starting point, but for this, we're gonna just do it the old fashioned way. So before getting colored, we are going to add a new node. We're gonna right click, we're going to go to add node, add serial, and then it's going to add a new one right afterwards. And since we are diligent professional color correctors, 
we are going to label all of our nodes. This is color. And the one we did before, remember, is exposure. So we're going to do exposure. So then we come over to the color and we're going to go to our vector scopes, open them up a little bit, and we're going to choose our shadows. So this looks pretty balanced. It's looking a little towards the red and the magenta. So we are going to bring it down just a little tiny bit with our wheel there, get it somewhere a little bit closer to the middle. That's looking pretty good. We're going to switch over to the midtones here. That's skewing a little bit yellow and a little bit green. So we just inch it over towards the right just a little bit. And then our highlights, which it's a little bit hard to see when it, the image is this flat. There's not a lot of color yet, which we're going to adjust in a later step. But I can tell that it's a little yellow and a little green, so we're just going to move it just a little tiny bit over. All right, so we're going to go up here. We're going to command D and you can kind of see it makes it a little bit more balanced. There are a ton of different ways you can color balance your image. This is just one option for you. So moving on, we can add another node after the color. We're going to go to add node, add serial. We're going to right click, change the node label and call this one saturation. And this one is going to add just a little bit more color since it's looking still a little bit flat. So we are going to go to the saturation wheel down here and just bump it up until it's looking pretty normal. So that looks good. We're going to disable that. You can see that it adds a little pop of color. Um, you can click the bypass color grade and see that this is looking like a pretty dang good image. We can go back to our vector scope and just double check that the color is still balanced on our color node, of course. And yeah, I mean, you can kind of just go back and just like tweak things just a little bit to see with this new level of saturation, how things are looking. You might just need to kind of nudge it a little bit. And another thing you can do is you can go to the temperature and the tint. So this will make things bluer or warmer. That's obviously a little bit extreme or it'll make it greener or more magenta. You know, we can just sort of fiddle around a little bit just to see what looks good. But to me, this is looking like a pretty good image. If you want to, you can add yet another node. I'm going to add a serial node. I'm going to label this one and I'm going to call it contrast. And like everything else, there's a ton of different ways you can add contrast. The easiest way is just to use the contrast wheel down here and you just raise the contrast. And that will, when you go over to your waveform, let's do that again, undo. So when you raise the contrast, you can see that it lifts the highlights and it, lift, and it lowers the shadows and you get a more contrasty image. The pivot tool right here just adjusts where the contrast lives on the waveform. It doesn't change the contrast, it just moves it up and down. So if you wanted to make your image the same amount of contrast, but make it a little darker, you could just lower the pivot a little bit. And you see, our image is looking really good. So again, we're gonna bypass the color grid. You can see how flat it was. And then you turn it on. Wow, what a beautiful image. We are such good colorists. I'll say that we have an image like this. Whoa, looks like we screwed up the white balance when we were shooting this. So we got to fix it. So we're going to take this one. We are going to name this one exposure. Um, even though the exposure on this one looks pretty okay for right now. We are going to add another node, a serial node. We're going to call this one color since this is what we have to work on the most. So we're going to pull up the vector scope. Remember, when we color correct, we don't trust our eyes and our monitors exclusively. We start with the science and then we can sort of tweak things accordingly if we want to. So this image is obviously super, super blue. We can go into the highlights. We can see, wow, it's way down here. So in order to counteract that, we're just going to take the highlight wheel, pull it up. We want it to be as centered as possible. That's looking pretty good. We go to the midtones. Again, it's way over towards the blue. We're going to center it a little bit. Go down here. 
this looks pretty good, but we can tell that the exposure is a little bit off. And how do we know that? We go to the waveform. You can see that it's kind of skewing a little towards the bottom. So we're gonna lift the gamma just a little bit. We're gonna lift the highlights a little bit. And remember I said, sometimes things will clip. Obviously there's a bright window with sunlight streaming in. That's to be expected, so we're fine with that. Um, but we're gonna raise the exposure just a little bit. Bring down the shadows a touch. And we can go back to our color now and see how it's looking. So we're here in the shadows. It's skewing a little, little warm, a little towards the yellow. So we're gonna bring it back just a touch. And then we are going to go to our midtones. And yep, that's a little too warm as well. So we bring it down just a little bit. And then we go to our highs and and that's looking a little green as well. Um, so we do that. And then I'm just going to add another node real quick. Call this one contrast. And like we did before, just we're gonna raise the contrast a little bit. We're gonna change the pivot so that it gets a little dark, a little lighter. And as you can see, now we have a pretty well balanced image. Where we started was pretty gnarly. It looks like it was nighttime basically underwater. And then we added this. It's not perfect, but for a quick little demonstration, I think that it'll suffice. And if you want to go a little bit overboard and just do something a little bit spicy, you can add another node. We're going to call this one vignette. And so in order to a vignette, you add a window and we're going to add a circular window right here. We're going to expand it out so that it's fitting the whole frame it's going out a little bit. And then we are going to invert it. And in order to do that, you click this button. And so now it's selecting all of the area that's outside of the window. And in order to bring a vignette, we're just going to bring down the exposure just a little bit in the midtones and the highlights and the shadows. You can feather out, let's zoom out a little bit. You can feather out the vignette so that it is a little bit more natural and make it a little bit bigger there. And now we have a vignette on our image. You can toggle this node on and off just adds a little bit more focus to the image and makes everything look just a little bit better. And once you have it, you can go back and you can make adjustments. You can raise the contrast a little bit, change the pivot. And yeah, so before, after, before, after. It's even looking a little warm, but you can turn that down a little bit. Overall, I think it's a a big improvement over what we began with. Okay, so we've got a great well-exposed image. The color balance looks nice, but then guess what? You go to the next shot and uh-oh, it doesn't match. These two shots are not gonna cut together and nobody is going to like your film. So we have to make them match. A quick and dirty way to do this is to highlight the clip that you want to grade, hold the control button, and then select the clip you're trying to match. And then you go up to the menu and click shot match to this clip. And it will do an automatic color grade and it actually looks pretty good. These two are going to cut together just fine. It's looking a little bit dark, but overall Resolve did a pretty good job. But we are colorists, so we are going to do it the old fashioned way. So let's go to the image we already colored right click on it and click grab still. And so what that will do is it'll take a still of our image and it'll have the color information in there for our disposal. So then we go over to the clipboard that we're trying to work on. We're gonna right click up here and we're gonna show reference wipe. And so what this does is it shows us the clip we're, we're working on and the clip that we're trying to match it to. And we can kind of wipe back and forth. We can change it so that it's vertical wipe, whatever we wanna do. Um, so yeah, I'm going to lower the highlights so that it's 
a little bit below 896. We're going to lower the shadows until it's just about clipped. Remember, label all your nodes. This one's exposure. I'm going to add a new node. We are going to label this one color. Um, I'm going to also just add another node. We're going to label this one saturation. We're going to add another node. We're going to label this one contrast. Okay, so the color, we go back to the vector scope. We choose which part of the image we're on. This is the highlights. I'm going to adjust it until the little white is in the center. We do the same thing with the midtones. It's still looking a little bit. Okay, let's go to the saturation node. Let's raise the saturation up a little bit. Recheck our colors here on the vector scope. So we can toggle the image on and off and you can see that it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think that these two images will cut together very nicely and everybody is going to give your movie two thumbs up. Congratulations, you've now color corrected your very first clip. This wasn't the first clip you've color corrected? Well, keep it to yourself, buddy. If you have any questions or any comments on things you would do differently or any other tips that you might have, feel free to leave them in the comments below. My name is Dean from B&H and I will see you next time.